All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Growth by Sean podcast. So I'm sitting here with Ryan Witherspoon today. Ryan, what's up, brother? How's it going, my man? So far, so good. So, Ryan, uh, why don't I just let you introduce yourselves to everyone, and we'll go from there. Right on. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, appreciate uh, it. Man. Yeah, my name is Ryan Witherspoon. Um, I am, let's see, first and foremost, I'm a human being, and... Uh, I, I appreciate this this human experience that we're having. Um, my number one goal in life is to listen to my heart and uh, and and learn as many lessons as I can. And and through this life so far, I've had a lot of fun and a lot of challenges. And um, yeah, I'm I'm a an enlisted coach like my brother here, and I am also a yoga teacher. I am a carpenter, which is one of my greatest passions. I love building. I love creating. I love working with my hands and uh, working working in the world like that helps me to find the creative side, helps me problem solve. And uh, yeah, I, I just, For sure. I also <laughs> uh, love, love nature very much. Um, mountaineering is one of my biggest passions, climbing mountains and uh yeah, that's that's the short of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'd love to hear just to get things started, how you what Soul Mountain Coaching is and then how the name was created, uh, what the meaning behind it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Soul Mountain Coaching is one of my um, new endeavors in the past couple of years um, through working with other people. I've learned a lot of tools and it's something that I want to help others with by by sharing what I've learned. And Soul Mountain is my metaphor for this life journey. Um, through mountaineering, I've I've learned that life is a journey, and Soul Mountain is my metaphor for reaching soul potential. And um, we all have mountains that we're climbing. We all have these routes and these ups and downs. And, uh, so as I've explored mountains, I've, I've learned to push past my limits and, um, and that's something that we all battle within our minds is moving forward. And so with soul mountain coaching, I, I help others to reach their own potential by, by asking questions and, um, and helping others to to figure out, you know, what what's the next move for them and and how they can keep moving forward. Yeah. What do you think is so when you're have someone that hops onto Soul Mountain Coaching, it's a lot to do with questions, not answers. And where do you think most people are getting stuck in terms of moving forward themselves? Mm. I found that it's it's the limiting beliefs around you know, what they can do right in the moment and what they can do to take the most simple action to step forward through, through mountaineering and, and through hiking and stuff. I've learned that it's, it's always just one foot after the other. And it's, it's that simple moment of what can I do right now and how can I just keep moving forward? So when other people, they realize that they have a goal and they want to accomplish something and they want to get to somewhere they're easily constantly looking at like the peak they're like how can i get to this point and stuff and instead of looking at you know the overall route of of the whole thing um it's it's the the limiting belief of of i'm not good enough to get to the top or i'm not strong enough or i'm not you know willed enough to do it and uh it's it's figuring out what is the most actionable step you can take right now, meeting yourself where you're at. And, uh, and yeah, like what, what is the one thing you can do right now to, to propel you forward the most? Hmm. And that's, um, that's normally very easy for people to define. And I can do this right now, even if it's not as far as I want to go, I know that I can take this one step forward and, uh, and then, you know, 
do that thing, do that one thing to do today and, and worry about the next step tomorrow. So for you, what was the most difficult limiting belief that you've overcome so far or one that you're still struggling to overcome mm. with? <clears throat> yeah. Um, constant battle for me is, uh, and it's one that I've, I've conquered many times and still it, it comes back and it's a, a repetitive pattern for me is, uh, is instant gratification. You know, in this today's world, it's, it's so easy to, to compare yourself to others and to compare yourself to what you want to be and to think about who you can be and, uh, and instantly wanting that gratification of the accomplishment and, and realizing and remembering that the greatest things take time to accomplish. And, um, so it's, it's focusing on releasing that, that attachment to instant gratification. And that comes in many ways, whether it's social media or it's, you know, weight training or, um, you know, relationships, whatever it is you want, you want the thing right now. And, and you want, you know, the easiest, the easiest way to get there and stuff, but that's often the less, um, less gratifying because, you know, it's, it, it makes the, the summit less impactful because when you get to push yourself and you get to, to find those, those spots of like perseverance, that's what makes makes the the goal so much better and so much sweeter when you when you get it when you can know that you work for it and you you struggle for it and you have challenge and uh and that's that's a big thing for me is is remembering that these great things take time and when you put in effort and um and and you work through struggle and and that makes it all the much sweeter gotcha yeah i mean i'm i'm not as versed as you in mountaineering itself. I've done like 15 out of the 48, 4,000 footers in New Hampshire. Um, and like I've done Mount Washington. So that's normally the one I start with with people. But I think what happens is that we like, imagine if like Mount Washington wasn't over 4,000 feet and it was just like a thousand feet and it took like 20 minutes to get up there. And then just like everyone get up there. Ooh, no. The people that have the bumper sticker that says this car dra- uh, climbs Mount Washington, like there's there's very little satisfaction in that because you did the, the barrier to entry. There's just nothing to really get there. I can't imagine that putting that bumper sticker on your car is really that satisfying versus the people that you see like hiking up and hiking down. It took us like nine hours round trip um, or like I think about with like uh, relationships, if what would it be as sweet to have a relationship with the girl that you could have at any moment and anyone could have her or like the girl that's only going to be in it for you you know that that's where my mind started to start to go so what are some of the things that or what's something that you're working towards now that um you have to really reset and say wow i i know that i just need to take these small steps to get there but it's something that you really desire right now and you and you wish you could have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so like I was saying, I'm I'm a yoga teacher and one of my my greatest passions is uh to to lead powerful yoga events and yoga retreats, yoga immersions, um, along with connecting to to nature and to the mountains, um, and and also tying in my my passion for carpentry and stuff. I want to build these these centers where people can come to connect with themselves and their bodies and their minds and their souls, along with remembering that they're human and they're a part of nature. And so I really want to create a space for for people to um to come and be safe and be themselves and be seen. And, uh, and it's something that I really want now. And I also know that it's going to take a lot of time, a lot more skill, a lot more reps to, uh, to cultivate this place. 
building a retreat center on my own with my own hands, working with people, working with community to to create this this collective. And uh, it's something that that I can see so clear in my mind. I can see the vision, I can see the interactions, and I can see the impact. Um, and and that's that's one thing I remember is like, okay, if I want this to be great, then I know that I have to to put in the work. I know that I have to do the work on myself and I know that, you know, I have to, to make the connections with people and, and that, that is, that alone will, will take time. Um, and it's, yeah, it's interesting when you, when you start to like fall into the place of who you want to be to, to get to where you want to be, um, it takes a relief off of like, what you should be doing or what you could be doing and um and just really trusting the process i think that's that's one of the things that i've learned most about mountaineering and through anything whether it's running or um, relationships like the the greatest things take time and and learning to trust that process um whatever it may be whether you're doing really well and you're having like a really nice nice flow of things say, ah, I trust this. And that's where it's easy to trust, you know, when it's, when you're having like a, a good flow and things are falling into place. Um, and then trusting in the universe and in yourself when things are really challenging and, and it's really hard. Um, that's where, that's where the most growth comes in my eyes when you can, when you can trust that whatever's happening right now, especially in the challenges, um, this is, this is all happening for me. So when you talk about our, our soul, what is that to you? Mm. Yeah. The soul is in my eyes. It's that, it's that infinite, endless beauty of, of presence of, of finding you know, the, the remembrance of what we're doing here on earth is, is just a part of it all. And the soul is our own expression of a greater whole. I think there's, there's individual souls and then there's the, the grand soul, which is, which is all of it. And here on earth, we have this beautiful opportunity to express like our own individual, individual part of the soul and remembering that we're all one super soul experiencing um one aspect of the creation and one perspective um and the soul to me is is that one singular place where where you can remember that you're enough and that you're you're able to create what you want to create and see the world how you want to see it and um and the soul is is something that is is individual to everyone because we all have our own past experience and we all have our own um our own way of of interacting with ourselves and the soul can be this place of revitalization when you're able to tap back into it and and understand that that where i'm at is exactly where i need to be so like the soul is is that remembrance to me is 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 the the place where where i can go to to just be be who i am regardless of who i'm with regardless of where i'm at um and it's it's yeah it's a big remembrance of of just life life is like a beautiful thing and and when i think of the soul like that's enough to to keep me like put a smile on my face to to remember that i'm here to you know be present to breathe to acknowledge whatever comes my way and uh and and just to remember that it's it's all all right you know like everything's going to be okay and uh and it's it's that spark of um 
that spark of divinity where where you can you can be present and and um and release any attachment to anything knowing that whatever is going to be here is is enough you know it's the the aspect of of remembering if that makes sense yeah i got no i i i'm understanding um i like that you called the the super soul or ever like the the mega soul in a sense where um i think a more common term is just like the collective where everyone is a part of each other where it doesn't matter who you interact with everyone has different parts of each other within themselves and that's part of just that super soul um in terms of our soul and why we're here do you think that our soul predetermined this human experience for us Mm. that's that's (laughs) that's a tough one um and i like that and yes and no because there is this this grand scheme you know it's you know i would first ask is like what is you know like what is the meaning of it all you know so like why why are we here you know i i really can't answer that question you know i i just know that we're here for something you Mm -hmm. know and um and if we can all express like that individual perspective that we're here with um remembering it it makes it easier to remember that that we're all part of something you know so like having having one perspective of my soul and then to your soul you know it's like what is the one thing that ties us together you know love compassion anger fear like all these emotions that we that we experience as humans it's all valid like we're all full spectrum you know so having having your own individual interaction and remembering that yeah, we all we all have our own gifts and we all have our own perspective and the soul to each individual is is a chance to like reconnect with with the super soul and with that that mega collective. Yeah. Okay. Do you um let's let's sim like a, a similar aspect of it. Do you think that everything that's happening right now for us is predetermined? Or how much do you think that we're creating and how much is like already predetermined in creation? Mm. Um, <clears throat> well, it can go in a lot of ways. You know, I think about like that brings to mind like string theory and stuff. I think there is mm-hmm. a lot that's laid out, you know, and there's an infinite amount of possibilities. You know, so whether we, whatever we choose to decide in this moment, like we could go any which way with this, this conversation or this and, um, and what we're going to do today. And there's going to be an infinite number of paths that we can take. So there is a layout in my opinion of like what outcomes are possible. And that's like with, with, um, like I'll refer back to like soul mountain. Like, so when you're, when you're looking at the summit that you want to get to, there's a number of ways to get to the top of that mountain, you know? So I, I believe that we have a choice to, to get to where we want to go and where we want to go is, is our decision as a soul. Ultimately the summit in this case is, is coming back to that super soul. And so where we, when we decide something, it creates and opens up a new reality for us to, to maneuver through. And that will lead to another reality. And as we, as we make decisions and as we, we change, um, it does impact the destination in a way of perspective, you know, like what, and, and I think that there is, there's a lot to, um, there's a lot to understanding of like wherever I'm going is, is going to be where I end up. And, and that's not really predetermined, but it's, it's a matter of just how we get there. And, 
you know, it's, it's going to be a long journey of, you know, and if like, I, I do believe in, in reincarnation and, and coming back to life in many different forms, whether it's human on this earth or different, different life on this earth or, or different places along, along the cosmos, whatever that may, may lead, you know, I, I have no idea or, or don't remember right now. Um, and I think that, that it's just, it's all a part of a grand scheme of, of coming back to that collective of, you know, and, and so this, this life here, it's easy, it's, it's more easy for us to think that this life is, is the big scheme because this is where we're at right now. So to think about like this life being predetermined is, is only one aspect of, of what is really, you know, out there and determined and possible. Mm. Um, so it's, I think there is a lot that's predetermined as far as just like that big collective remembrance and unity. And then there's also the individual aspect of us being here right now in this present moment, which is like, like I said, we can go, we can go any which way we want in a day and it's, mm -hmm. it's all a matter of choice. So as you make one choice that, that cause has an effect and then that effect has another cause that's, that's going to come after it except those those are up to us to decide as as which which direction we want to go. Hmm. So there's also you mentioned the word remembrance a lot and this is what triggered in my mind was different theories about how when we or if we are have been reincarnated or already lived this life already and then when we are born we have all of the knowledge but then it's wiped from our memory and we're either doing it again or getting another chance at it or it's already happened and then we're we're redoing it um i think i th those two may have uh been the same thing that i was trying to get across but do you think that it's something where we have already um like this life has already happened and our soul has chosen what's going to happen and then we have forgotten all the knowledge that we already have? Or do you think this is a, a fresh slate in this next reincarnation that we, we have? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, if we look at it like a, like a wheel, you know, like, you know, if we're, we're at one aspect of, of the circle, one aspect of the wheel, we're here. And then we, we move forward, we come into this life and, and yeah, I think there is like this, this, forgetting of we have all the knowledge within us we have the life force within us like that's that's our root and and we do forget you know and and we haven't necessarily lived this life before except the lessons that we're learning are similar lessons to what our soul needs to to get back to that place and and it's it, i believe that it is our choice as a soul to come here and in, incarnate in this body and and it's a choice to forget so that we can more like integrate into the soul what it is that we're we're meant to learn so as as we experience this life or any life in the past and any life in the future we're going to come in contact with similar experiences that are going to just deepen the the knowing of of what is what is truthful to you know to us as an individual soul and as a collective you know like if we if we continue around this circle we're gonna we're gonna keep going and and ultimately it's you know gonna take us back to where we were and then we're gonna be able to keep moving forward except those those lessons are gonna just deepen and as we we deepen the lessons we're gonna understand more and um and that's going to propel us forward into, you know, that, that deeper understanding of, of trust and, um, and, and, a a longer remembrance as, as we come into this life. Like, I, I believe that I'm where I'm at today because of the things that, that I do remember. And these things are, are hard to articulate, except they're things that I feel in my body. You know, if it's like, if you get to a place and, and you've you're in a you're in a new situation with new people or in a new new uh surroundings 
and it and it still feels familiar and you can just you know trust with with your body that that where you're at is is a lesson that that you need to learn and it's a a perspective of of yeah rem, like knowing that these things have happened before um except in a different light you know so like seeing seeing the different shadows that are casted um are the the opportunities for for a deeper knowing of of what you what you're meant to to learn here mm. when when we have conversations like this i think part of this is also that we have not in comparison to others but our understanding ourselves more and having a deeper level of consciousness and looking at why we are here how we are here not that we have the answers but at least putting different perspectives onto um what these lessons in everyday life can teach us where do you think most people in this collective whether it's on a soul level or just the human experience level have why it's become so difficult to trust and just sit with themselves and haven't even explored the possibility that like this is all happening for them it's just happening to them um i would say the number one thing is is fear you know like we we have this idea and these these stories of like what what life should be and and based on what we've gone through or what we've been told and stuff and as we grow it's it's easy to get caught up in fear you know so like we're afraid of of what the truth would be because we've created so many stories in our in our head of of what we you know believe to be true and so the the fear of of learning is is for a lot of people like the the scary part of like okay if if I learn something new or if I acknowledge the truth and and take like full responsibility for it then it's it's on me to to change that paradigm and that's that's where the fear comes in is because people get so comfortable and so used to things that when they have conversations like this it creates a lot of resistance and a lot of fear because it can just rock their whole world. You know, it's like when you ask questions like these, it's like, oh man, what if I was wrong? What if, you know, everything that I thought was a lie, you know? And and if you ask those questions, then it gets really scary, you know? And it's easier to to dismiss them because we want to stay comfortable. We want to stay in the paradigm that we've created for ourselves. And, um, and if you listen closely, it's, it's, it really doesn't matter, you know, like what, what the truth is. It's, it's the idea of, of understanding that, that truth there's, there's like three sides to a story. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the truth of it, you know? So there's like, and that's, that's something that, I see with a lot of people is like they they get stuck on those stories that they've created and that they've learned and and when those paradigms shift it's like what do I do now you know and instead of saying you know this happened to me and and pushing that off to to the world and to you know external factors and just taking responsibility for it and it's like okay this is where I was and that's where I want to go and those things can change um and and releasing like that that fear around um around the attachment to the story and and what what life should be is is really scary and from what i found every time that i can acknowledge and accept that i'm wrong in a situation that's where like it's an instant release off my shoulders it's like okay i was wrong like so what you know mm -hmm. like how am i going to take this this moving forward and um, and just, you know, keep going in an aspect of like, like, what is it, what does it really mean? You know, if, if I was wrong, does that mean I'm a bad person? Does that mean that, you know, I'm, I'm no good to, to the world and I can't serve in, in my gift? Or does this mean that I had the opportunity to, 
you know, take a humble pie to the face and, and say, Oh, you know, that, that was a, a hard smack to the face, but it was, it was a real sweet humble pie and now I'm better for it. Mm. Um, so from your, from your perspective, I think what happens and we're on the same page here, a lot of our belief systems what that have been instilled in us, okay, from just external factors and we start to believe them and they create this fake version of ourselves that we operate at. And then we operate at that fake version of ourselves for so long because of the stories that have been told to us. And then we take on that own belief system um, and then that becomes part of who we are as opposed to being actually who we are. What do you do in terms of figuring out who you are versus what people have told you about yourself or past experiences that you've had? How how did you get to this point is what I'm trying to get to where you have created your own belief system about you and you know who you are instead of all of this conditioning that's happened to you. Mm -hmm. Um, it's for me, it's, it's trying new things, you know, in every, every way that I can, you know, asking questions to people that I'm curious about to hear their perspective, doing, doing hard things like running and, um, climbing mountains. And, and when I do these hard things, it, it challenges myself physically. And, and that's what, um, really has propelled me to, to, to be okay with, with shift and change and, and these paradigm crumbles of like, because when you, when you do hard things and you focus on new experiences, like there's, there's a, there's an opportunity to, to just, you know, take responsibility for, for where you're at. And, um, if, if we can do new things and be open-minded to it, then that takes, that takes away all the pressure of like what, what the outcome should be. And that's, that's where I can realize, like, if I'm going to do a new experience, if I'm going to climb a new mountain or run a new race or travel somewhere or take a new certification and and get more education about something it's like what what's my real goal here am i am i having a goal to to grow as a person or am i here to to prove that i'm right you know and if if you go into a new experience with the thought process of i know what's going to happen then there's there's no real growth in that so like focusing on new experiences and 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 leaning into this the discomfort of of those new new experiences has allowed me to just trust that that it's all okay when when a paradigm gets shattered like it's okay that's that's a lesson all these stories that come in that i've created for myself and that i identify by is is something that has gotten me to where i am and you know I've learned through those new experiences that it's, it's all different on the other side. So like when we, when, when I'm able to stay open-minded in new experiences and in challenge, then, um, then it just creates more of this, this opportunity to, to find a shift, like where, where we're at is, is in itself this this like unraveling so having having those identities and those stories that that tie us to ourselves and that we can that we do just stay in um yeah there's there's no real growth in that for me so so understanding that and like i said at the beginning like i'm i'm a human and i'm here to learn you know so if I'm still, if I'm going to stay attached to the stories, then there's, there's nowhere, like, I'm, I'm just going to stay where I'm at, you know, and, and I'm not okay with that. Like, you know, so like, and it's, it's not that I'm not okay with where I'm at right now. It's that I have the goals that I want to, to be enough in my own, in my own presence. 
and and finding those new experiences allows me to question like what's coming up what are my thoughts what are my feelings and and how are they you know how is this this creating my reality of of what i want and um and so it's yeah it's the the new experiences of of just being open minded to to whatever's going to happen whatever's going to unfold that's that's the big truth of it you know it's like if we can be open minded then then that's that's paradigm shifting in itself just to to be okay whatever's happening is is an experience and there's no right or wrong you know there's there's only like where we've where we've been at and and knowing that yeah it's it's a story you know hmm. everything that we have is a story of of who we thought we were and who we thought we are and and yeah i'll leave i'll leave it at that the open the open mindedness to to new experiences is is what has helped me the most yeah i like that i mean i think what happens is we get stuck in everything that is comfortable and that we already know what's going to happen or we have a belief in a story around something that this is what's happened in the past this is what's going to happen now um or even just different beliefs like someone that says oh well i can't afford that because five hundred dollars is a lot of money but if you ask you you could say well, no, $500 isn't a lot of money to me. Or you could go to Elon Musk and say, uh, you could say, oh, I need you to invest $500 and he'd just like give you $500 out of its wallet or something. You know, I think it's different perspectives. And I just use money because it's such an easy example um, that I think everyone can relate to. Um, and so not saying that that's something that you need to just go and say, uh, oh, I'm going to go and do hard things and I'm going to spend $10,000 because, you know, it's, it's not a lot of money for me anymore. No, I'm, I'm just getting the point across of different belief systems and doing hard things can all lead to another outcome that you're desiring. Um, I'm going to sidestep for a minute here. When you've talked to the human experience for, uh, mentioned that a couple of times now, do you think that you've run across anyone or anything that could have been human but wasn't thus far like just a non-player character type of deal or a alien robot type of type I, of deal or <laughs> i definitely have i some people <clears throat> some people i've i've interacted with i'm like uh eh. I don't know about you. I don't think you're I don't think you're from here, you know, whether it's like something something about the way they look or their energy, you know, it's like I don't know, you you're you're something you're different than yeah. than me, you know. Um there is there is some people out there that you know, I I definitely think that are you know, from a different place and um and also through like some of my plant medicine experiences, like I've, I've come across entities that, you know, are, are definitely not human. And, um, and, and I, it's, it's an energy thing that I look at, you know, it's like, what, what kind of, and, and I believe that you can feel this with people. And I've had this conversation with people about like some people are just clairvoyant and some people aren't. And I think it's, it's, um, it's like this, um, some people have developed that skill more than others through, through lifetimes and through experiences and through like practice of intuition. And, uh, and there is times where, um, you know, and who's to say like these, these things are real or not, you know, when you come across different energies and different, different like life forms. Um, and, and even like going out into nature, like I, I've had interactions with, 
with rocks, with trees, with, you know, all sorts of different, different life forms that like, I can, I can recognize that, you know, they're, they have their own, their own aspect of the soul within them too, you know, like these, these lessons that I've learned and, um, and, and so like, yeah, I would, I would say, I would say definitely. I, I say definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's interesting that you used. So you had said, if I'm uh, getting this right here, that when we look at different energy, it can be a skill uh, to read someone's energy and their uh, like practicing their intuition, just, just the skill of reading energies and, and having a better energy. I, I feel I disagree. I don't think it's a skill. I think it's just something that over time you can develop, but you can't just want to develop it. It's it's more of something of how comfortable you are with your own self and being your own self and understanding yourself, and then you will start to radiate that that different energy. But if you just want to have that energy and you're attempting to practice it, then I don't think you can you can get there because I don't think you can fake it. But if you have a differing opinion or if we're on the same page, please go go back and forth with me a little. No, I I, <laughs> I like that, and 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 I and maybe skill wasn't the the best way to, to describe it because okay. <laughs> I do I do think that you know like you're you're spot on, and it's not mm. something that you can you can practice. In a, in a sense of like, I I'm choosing to practice being mm -hmm. clairvoyant or, yeah. or understand these energies. And that creates that level of, of like attachment and seeking, you know, whatever, whatever you're seeking, you're going to, you're going to find. Mm -hmm. um, so if like, and it's the, the experiences that people brush off, you know, like as a, as a child, we think about, or the, like as a child people t they'll say like oh i had an imaginary friend or i had this or i have these experiences or oftentimes there's there's stories that you know like these different like children have an easier time to be connected with with spirits and ghosts and and whatever that is and i think it's that as we grow older people tell us that oh those things aren't real you know those you know, that was a dream or that was your imagination. And I think that's where like the disconnect comes as we, we start to tell ourselves that, oh, that was just a shadow or that was just, um, something that I conjured up in my mind. That's where we lose the, we lose that connection of, of knowing. And, and when we, not, like rather than seeking out those those energies it's just an, an honest perspective of like this happened you know like saying you know people see ufos in the sky and there's nobody around it's like those people they don't need to prove anything it's like that that was an experience that i had that happened i know it was true because i lived that experience and that's mm -hmm. that's where i think that that skill can be developed is is that it's 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 less of denying what you saw and what you feel and trusting that this this is what happened to me and this was this was a real experience because because i felt it and, and not just like a physical felt but like uh like your own energetic felt like what mm -hmm. shifted happened you know a lot of times i'll think about and and some signs for me that i'm i'm more tapped into that is like goosebumps, you know, or like that, that shiver of like, you know, something's, something's going on here. I don't know what it is, but it's like, I feel something in, in my, in my body, in my soul. And it's like, and, and that's the skill of like listening to that and saying, okay, what's going on here? What am I thinking? What am I experiencing? And that's, that's how people can get better at it. And and if you your intention is to listen to those those shivers and you're listening to those 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 feelings, then that's where it it becomes easier to to acknowledge and say, all right, something is going on here. 
my my body's telling me something um that whisper is 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 there and 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 not proving it to to others but but just proving it to yourself that like you're that i'm able to to tap into that you know everybody's able to tap into that but it's it's learning to mm -hmm. to trust that that feeling that that gut feeling of like yeah something's going on here yeah. i don't understand it and that's okay but something's <laughs> happening yeah i think that i think you said it perfectly there where you just when you trust it you trust yourself and when you trust yourself you will be open to the experience of having it no matter what it is but if you don't necessarily the experience may not happen for you um i just think it may be more likely that when you trust yourself you can you're more open to having an experience of that sort um let, let's get into the last question here so uh the last guest left you a question this is from jessica sandow i graduated uh and lifted with her so which has more value in your life, motivation or discipline? Mm. Discipline for sure. <clears throat> um, I I like to look at discipline as as a tool that is you know is a great thing, especially when you're beginning to develop a practice and and start to work towards a goal and stuff. Discipline is really challenging because it creates a lot of resistance or it shows a lot of the resistance that, that you have. And, and it takes a lot of effort to be disciplined at first. And then as you start to like fine tune your route, discipline can be put to the side a little bit. And, and that's when you create good patterns and good habits and, and you're able to, to do what you know you need to do. And then when life happens, which it always does, that's when you can pull discipline back out and be like, okay, you know, discipline is the tool of, of saying no and saying yes, when I need to, knowing that this is, this is where I'm at. Um, so, so yeah, discipline is, is a lot more impactful for me and, and motivation is, is a great place to, to start except it's, it's a fleeting thing. You know, it's, you're, you're, you're only motivated when, um, you know, when, when you've had enough, when you've, when something has, has gotten so close in your face that like you, you have to make the change. Um, and then that's gonna, it's gonna fade, you know, because you're mm -hmm. gonna, you're gonna make that, that little change. You're gonna take that one step forward. And then whatever was in your face is no longer gonna be there. Um, except the discipline is something that, that is, is there to, you know, as, as a tool, it's like, okay, life is going good. You know, I'm, I'm taking the steps that I need to take. Um, and then all of a sudden life happens and, um, and then that's where you get to pull discipline back out and say, okay, you know, I, I created this, this path forward and now now as things are are going to start to shift and change and and other experiences are going to happen knowing that like something that i'm committed to gets to be done and and that's where where discipline comes in for me it's like if you can create these the most easy like easily accessible way forward that's the first aspect of discipline is like creating that and then once you create that things become easy again and uh and then it's the little slip ups where you need to to pull discipline back out you know of like when i've created this this route forward and and for me i'm thinking about running right now um like i i'm a, i'm an endurance runner so i've created the most easily accessible way for me to train for running and that's to to have my program set up, know which days I'm going to be running, um, know how far I'm going to run. And then as I started to create that program, it was very easy or it was, it was challenging for me to get in the flow of that. And then once it started to, to happen, it was like, okay, this is what I do now. You know, this is, this is a, a part of who I am and this is what I'm going to do now. And then 
when things happen, I get invited out with friends or, you know, there's um, a shift in work or something. And, and then that's where like the discipline of boundaries comes in. And, and I'll have to pull that, that discipline back out and say, okay, like, here's, you know, a decision, yes or no. And um, so, so discipline is, is for sure more impactful and, and more beneficial in my opinion than motivation because of the fact that it's, it's creates a non-negotiable, whereas motivation is, is only there, you know, oftentimes either when you're feeling really shitty and, you know, you have to make that change and that's the motivation, that shittiness, or if you're feeling really good about something and it's like, oh, I feel I'm in the flow, I'm motivated, you know, and, and I know that that feeling of, of goodness is gonna, is gonna fade away at some point. So what happens then? You know, you're just gonna, you're gonna stop doing what you're doing. If the motivation isn't there, most likely, you know, but if, if you, if you make the commitment and, and, you know, practice the discipline, then, um, that's where it, it doesn't matter, you know, what's, what's going on. You, you can use that, that as, uh, as a, a way to move forward. Yeah. I, I love, uh, the majority of what you said there. I think too, when I was thinking about this question for myself, I look at how the two are intertwined and we first see we can either use motivation to get us started and then use discipline to keep something, or we can have enough pain where we say, okay, now I'm going to, I'm just going to do this because there's been so much pain without that motivation. And then we develop discipline through that habit because of how painful the experience is. And then when we look at the the goal of where we want to get to, then we can start to use motivation. Those are just the two sides mm-hmm. that I see it. Um, but I think no matter how someone uses it, it doesn't it doesn't matter how you use it as long as you use it for the right purposes for you. So it's a it's a pretty good question. It's it's um yeah, I didn't expect this question to to be able to go as deep as we did with it, but I'm glad we did. So um Ryan, can we just uh hear where we can find you, how we can work with you? Yeah. Um yeah, I can be uh found on on Instagram at Soul Mountain Coaching. Um I also have my own podcast, Summit to Soul Mountain, where I talk, you know, a lot of a lot of the similar things that we went over, different stories, different, different ideas, different concepts. Um my website is summit to soul and, uh, and, and I also teach a yoga class most Sundays, um, at 10 AM Eastern time. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it right now. Um, I also will be, um, I'm working on creating a, another men's immersion, um, this year it'll be in Costa Rica going to be happening in um sometime in april we haven't fully defined the dates yet um so that that'll be an upcoming um release of the project in the in the next month or so that that we'll be announcing um and and yeah beautiful yeah guys um i really enjoyed this conversation with you ryan first off but no matter who's listening if you feel connected to either of us in any type of way, feel free to just send us a message that way we're, we're two really great people, especially Ryan here that you can go and work with and learn from and recreate and really transform your life into the one that you want um, as opposed to the one that you're living now, if you're not satisfied with it. So uh, don't be afraid to just go and message Ryan and chat with him and hop on a call, do, do whatever you need to do to really, make the progress and strides of who you, who you want to become. So I just want to give that to you, Ryan there. So yeah, guys, this'll, this'll do it for us. And then we'll see you next time, Ryan. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Sean. It was a pleasure.